Mute yourself. Darshan. Darshan, please mute yourself. Okay. So basically, uh, Neha, what we were discussing is that the moment the pollen sits, the pollen grains sit on the stigma, it develops a long tube-like structure. And that long tube, which is known as the pollen tube, you know, enters the ovary through a hole. There's a tiny hole out here, which is known as the micropyle. The tiny hole is known as a micropyle. Uh, here, I would request all of you, you all of you must have seen Chana right chana rajma whatever you know you will find at the base there is a small hole like this if you have not seen i would suggest that all of you see and when you when you keep it in water when you allow it to germinate you will find the radical the small root and the plumule the small plant generally comes out from that small little hole only right so this is basically uh so this is this is different right so i'm gonna ask something that the pollen tube is that time only like uh it is coming out that time or it is already there no it is not there it is prepared it grows when we all we know that pollen is just one small round ball like structure which is like very tiny yellow in color and it's just a small round ball in color it does not have anything else when it sits on the stigma it does not have anything else. After it sits on the stigma, after a few minutes or after a few hours, then these pollen grains develop that pollen tube. Slowly, slowly it grows in length. Slowly, slowly it grows in length. And after it grows in length, it enters through the micropyle, it enters into the ovary. And it goes in contact with the ovule. And then the fertilization happens. We all wonder now that the pollen, pollen grains just sit on the stigma. No, it will sit on the stigma. Then the pollen tube will grow long, long, long until it reaches and enters the ovary and touches the ovule. Ma'am, you told some word about entering inside it. What was the word? The small hole, uh, you know, which is present in the ovary is called the micropyle. Micropyle. Yes, micropyle. Darshil, kindly uh, switch off your audio. There's a lot of background noise coming. Darshil? Darshil, kindly mute your mic. Ma'am, could you please write that name about that hole in the ovary? It is known as micropyle. Okay. It? Yeah. So moving ahead, that was about uh, the female reproductive part, the male reproductive part, petals and sepals. Okay. Now we go ahead and discuss about a complete flower and an incomplete flower all right okay so um whom do i call for um, can i yeah sure yashika please read out from this portion note portion all plants do not have flowers with both stamen and carpels some have only stamen and are the male flowers some have only pistil and are the female flowers. Such flowers are called unisexual flowers. Correct. Right. So basically here, uh, you know, this is what, you know, Neha and Vamika tried to explain. When, you know, a flower has all the four walls, it is known as a complete flower. When it has three walls, it could be any three walls, then it is known as an incomplete flowers obviously it is not complete right so basically you know for example this is a flower these are the petals right it has the stamen only and it has the uh, the filament and the anther it has the petals and it has the five sepals and the pedicel right 
So is this a complete or an incomplete flower, Yashika? Incomplete, ma'am. Incomplete because it does not have a gynecium. Where is the stigma? Where is the style and the ovary? It is missing. Right? So this is an incomplete flower. So these kind of flowers we call male flowers. Because remember I said it has only andresium. And andro means male. Right? An incomplete. Ma'am, we have just said that an incomplete flower will have the only the male part or no, no. only the female part. Either so or, or. Yes, either or. Flower which has only the male part is the male flower. And the flower which has only the female part is the female flower. Yes, excellent. So has everybody understood this point? Anybody who has a doubt, please ask right now. Okay, so basically these are examples of incomplete flowers. The gourd family, as in it could be a bitter gourd, it could be a bottle gourd, the gourd family, the cucumber, right? These are all unisexual flowers. One or the other world is missing, right? Now conclusion is, okay, uh, Mamika, can you please read out the conclusion portion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one second, I'll just, um, you know, uh, yeah, ma'am. A flower represents the reproductive part of a plant body. It is the most important part meant for offering. Each flower has a stalk called the pedicel, but some flowers do lack the pedicel, and such flowers are called sessile. Besides the stalk, a flower in general shows four sets of flowers are arranged in rings or whorls. Correct. So basically, as we have, you know, reiterating again and again that the flower is a reproductive part of the plant body, right? And the first, uh, remember in the beginning, I said this stalk is called the pedicel. There would be a few flowers which you will find that they do not have a pedicel. You know, if this is the stem or the branch, normally there is a pedicel and then there is a flower. But there will be some flowers which will just directly emerge from the stem. They will have no pedicel. So those flowers are known as sessile flowers. The same thing is happening, you know, the same thing is seen also in leaves. Always we see, you know, that a leaf has a petiole and, you know, then the thin stalk which we hold and midriff and everything. But there are some leaves which grow directly from the stem. They don't have a petiole. Those leaves are also called sessile leaves. Is this clear to all? Hello, ma'am. What? I can already hear you. What are you explaining? See, basically, most of the flowers will have a stalk, and yes, then they will they will have a pedicel. Correct. But there are a few flowers which do not have a pedicel. They they come out directly from the nodes, just straight like this. So those flowers are called sessile flowers. Similarly, the same thing is observed also in leaves. Leaves normally have a petiole, that the stalk. But a few leaves will not have a petiole. They straight away directly grow from the node. Those leaves are also called sessile leaves. And in case of flowers, it is called sessile flowers. So sessile leaves and sessile flowers. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. All right. No. Now, um, Darshil, can you hear me? Darshil, can you hear me? Okay, Vamika, once again, just read out. Uh, from... Ma'am, what do I read out? Read out point numbers mm -hmm. one, two, and three. Okay, ma'am. Calyx is the outermost whorl or sac composed of green leaf-like protective structures called sepals. Corolla is the next inner whorl composed of light, brightly colored petals. Being brightly colored, petals attract insects for pollination. Stamen is next to corolla and consists of apples and filaments. 
anther is a swollen structure present on the tip of filaments. The anther produces a powdery substance consisting of tiny structures called the pollen grains. The stamens present represent the male part of the flower. Male sex cells are produced inside the pollen grains. Correct. Uh, continue with point number four also. The central part of the flower is the female part, consisting of a flask-shaped organ called the carpel. Each carpel consists of basal swollen part called the ovary. The ovary continues into a long style and ends in a knob-like part called the stigma. Correct. All right. So are we clear with all the four worlds? Is all of you clear with all the four worlds? Yeah. Ma'am, yeah. can you please go back to yeah. the Yeah. Uh, Darshil, can you please mute your mic, dear? Darshil. Ma'am, can you please go back? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Let me know once all of you are done. Is anybody yes, left? Okay. All right. So basically, uh, you know, the ovary contain many contains many ovules, which are like the female sex organs present inside the ovule right so basically the ovary remember uh, vamika the swollen part that you were talking about which is present at the base this is the style and this is the stigma and the ovules are like this right i'm drawing this diagram again and again so basically yeah, after, yeah. i have a question about this chapter uh, okay let me complete it then uh, ask me okay so basically after the fertilization is over right and then what happens the ovary grows into a fruit and the ovules grow into seeds right so basically post fertilization after the embryo is formed sorry uh, post fertilization once the zygote is formed this grows into a fruit and the ovules grow into seeds and then it increases in size slowly and slowly as the fruit size of the fruit grows all these fall off they wither off you will not see any more petals, right? You will not see sepals. Only what you will see is the remaining is the stalk. For example, when you see an apple, right? If you cut open a longitudinal section of an apple, you will find the apple has seeds like this and a stalk. Do you see the petals? Do you see the sepals? Do you see the andresium and the gynesium? You see nothing. What you see is basically the ovary and the ovules which have grown up to be very big now. Now, can you say a case about this? Is that the same thing? I don't know. But the thing in my home, I'm having brinjal plants, and in that, it will be first having some purple flowers, and after that, small vegetable will be coming up. That mm -hmm. time, is that the petals are uh, changing into the pear, like a sepal of the fruit? No, no, the petals will just fall off. Then, the ma'am, how will the like, uh, um, how will the uh, vegetable have some upper coating uh, on it, like something green structure will be there, right? See, see, basically, what happens is that again, I'm drawing the same structure. This is it, correct? And this is it, right? This is the ovary. These are the ovules. I think so. This is the seventh or the eighth time I'm drawing this, right? So here, these are the sepals. These are the five sepals, and this is the pedicel, and these are the flower, maybe the light purple color flowers of the brinjal, right? Now, pollination has happened. Uh, you know, this thing has happened. Pollen tube has gone in. Fertilization has happened. Then slowly, slowly, what will happen is that the petals will fall off. It will dry. You see, now flowers dry off. The petals fall off. Then slowly, slowly, you know, this is also not required because pollen grains sat, they have done their work, so this will also fall off. What will remain is only the sepal and the ovary part. So basically, the, you know, once what happens is that ovary, different flowers will have different characteristics. There will be certain pigments, you know, there will be certain pigments, for example, uh, they could be, um, I'm, just, I'm just giving an example, there could be a pigment called erythrocin. Erythrocin is basically a red color pigment which will be present on the slowly, slowly it will, you know, start accumulating. And then slowly, slowly it grows 
and it will become an apple right so the outer shell becomes red in color because of this pigment i'm giving you an example there is a colored pigment called cyano cyano is basically a bluish purple color this this fruit when it grows up for example this grows up into a brinjal with tiny innumerable seeds so the outer covering you know of the um, brinjal will have these cyano pigment that's the reason why it is purple in color right so basically whenever you see a flower a fruit you know anything which is colored they Ma have they, they have removed the, the upper like the diagram on top for a second i can't read the thing clearly thank you is that clear neha the question yeah, about the